Here we go. Happy Monday to everybody. You're watching the San Francisco 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. No matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. Hope your weeks are off to a great start and you all had a phenomenal weekend. On the show today, some huge salary cap news over the weekend for the San Francisco 49ers. And let's take a look at it all and break it down. The Niners now post June 1 have $25.2 million in available cap space. San Francisco, on June 2nd officially, yesterday, Sunday, got $18 million from the Eric Armstead release because that was a post-June 1 designation. So the big question becomes, this Niners team going into 2024, they have one of the most loaded rosters in the NFL. They still have some holes on the team. And they could have a lot of money if they choose to dole it out to their own players to use as far as contract extension. So what moves could the Niners make? We take a look at eight extension candidates the Niners could allocate that money toward. But first, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, turn on your notifications, and join us tomorrow, Tuesday, live on the 49ers Report. Why? Because mandatory minicamp gets underway, and we'll be live during practice, the show starts at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. out on the West Coast. We'll have live updates, news, analysis, practice reports, and a lot more. You don't want to miss it. See you then. And with that, let's get this show underway. Some contract extension candidates. Let's go through those eight players right now. Wide receiver Brandon Ayuk, running back Christian McCaffrey, linebacker Fred Warner, cornerback Charvarius Mooney Ward, his running mate, Diamador Lenore, Aaron Banks, the left guard, Talanoa Hufonga, the safety, and linebacker Dre Greenlaw coming off that torn Achilles. We're going to go player through player here and give you a great show. So thank you so much once again for hanging out here with us. As for a Brandon IU contract extension, going into the Fifth year option year, set to make a base salary of $14.1 million. And given the wide receiver market has absolutely exploded this offseason, the price tag for Ayuk, in my estimation, continues to increase. Now, there is a possibility that Ayuk could play on the final year of that deal and then hit free agency next offseason or sign a deal with San Francisco next offseason. But if you do that, he's pretty much a lame duck. He's on an expiring deal. You're basically admitting that you probably don't want to pay him. Would drama await? And could there be negativity looming in the locker room for a team that has Super Bowl aspirations and you always want to avoid that drama as much as you can? Wide receiver extensions this offseason. This is why the price tag for Ayuk has been on the uptick. Justin Jefferson and the Minnesota Vikings this morning on Monday setting a record. Justin Jefferson becomes the highest paid non-quarterback in the history of the NFL with the most guaranteed money on a deal, overtaking Nick Bosa, and the highest average annual value, overtaking Nick Bosa as well. A four-year, $140 million contract. So he's set to make $35 million per year. And in turn, I think that Ayuk's deal has gotten a little bit more expensive. And I've gotten a question on that. Chase, Justin Jefferson is so much better than Brandon Ayuk. He's had so much more production. Why would his deal make Ayuk more expensive? Well, think about it this way, right? You have the same exact job as somebody else at your company, and they get a new contract that is now paying them so much more money. You now have the right, if you have that same job, to ask for more money on your deal. So that's why I think that IU could be due some more money. And then Jalen Waddell, a number two wide receiver, getting that much money, three for 85, that is also reset the wide receiver market. Nico Collins and the Houston Texans, inking a three-year, $73 million contract. A.J. Brown used to be the highest paid uh, wide receiver in the history of the NFL no longer after that deal went to Justin Jefferson, he signed a three-year extension worth $96 million with Philadelphia. Amon Ross St. Brown, four for 120. I think that's in the range of what I'd love for the Niners to pay Ayuk, about $28 million per year. And then Devontae Smith, three for 75. The danger in waiting in handing out contract extensions is what we've seen take place. 
all of these wide receivers have gotten fat deals. Earlier this offseason, I thought the Niners could have signed Ayuk for $25 million per season. But the average annual value has gone up, the guaranteed money has gone up, and obviously in turn, the total money has gone up. And if Justin Jefferson can get $35 million, C.D. Lamb now I think can get $32 to $33. Ayuk can go to the negotiating table and say, I haven't had the production of those players, but I'm just as valuable to my team as they are for their team. And if Jefferson's getting 35 and Lamb gets 32 or 33, I'm worth 30 and I'm better than Amon Ross St. Brown. I'd have better production than him if I had the targets and the receptions. So this wide receiver market has absolutely exploded. It has reset multiple times and it becomes a question and a real one. Could Ayuk demand $30 million per year? That is the danger in waiting. Because, as we know, the Niners have historically waited until around training camp, late July, August, for Nick Bosa in September to hand out contracts to their homegrown players. There's also a danger in paying wide receivers in general so much money. College football has become littered with good wide receivers. In the NFL draft, you can get quality wideouts first, second, third, fourth round. Sometimes even later, shoot, some of these UDFA wide receivers end up being very good players as well. And a lot of these young athletes, they come up in high school, they're playing in all of these seven on sevens. You don't need a running back in seven on sevens. And then these young athletes in high school and in college have realized the shelf life of playing running back, it doesn't last all that long. The money for wide receivers as compared to running backs is so much more. I don't want to play running back. I'm going to play wide receiver. And now we have seen this talent pool just take off at that position. So if the Niners really wanted to have Ayuk play on the final year of his deal and then address wide receiver in the draft next year, they could be pretty confident that they could find a really good wide receiver after just drafting Ricky Pearsall and Jacob Cowing, who could also just take over for Ayuk next year, and be confident that they can fulfill that production. Speaking of running backs and that market, how about a Christian McCaffrey contract extension? His four-year, $64 million deal that he signed with the Panthers runs through 2025. So the translation there, he's under contract with San Francisco for the next two years. He is set to be a free agent in the 2026 offseason. The issue that McCaffrey probably has, and it's going to be telling to see whether or not he shows up to mandatory minicamp on Tuesday, he has no guaranteed money left on his deal. So just like Ayuk has an argument to be made at the negotiating table, McCaffrey has an argument to be made with the 49ers that he deserves a couple of things potentially. More guaranteed money tacked onto his deal, a contract extension, or a new contract altogether. McCaffrey has been the Niners MVP the last two years. And without him, the offense isn't the same. They've barely lost a game or games with Christian McCaffrey in the lineup. That's how elite he's been. And then you look at the production, I don't even know if elite is a word to describe it. Borderline unstoppable in 2023. 16 games played, 272 carries. Most touches among all players in the NFL. That's another reason why he could ask for guaranteed money. He's a 27-year-old running back who might age more gracefully considering his wide receiving talent, but he's touched the football a lot for the Niners the last two years, and he's probably earned at least some guaranteed money. He leads the NFL last year with 1,400-plus rushing yards, 5.5 yards per carry, 14 touchdowns. He had 21 in total, tying him with Raheem Mostert for the most for a non-quarterback in the NFL last year. And oh yeah, he's a receiver too. 67 catches, 564 yards. And then the year before that, he was terrific after the NFL trade deadline acquisition. He has changed the complexion of this Niners offense and he has earned a contract extension. I mentioned earlier the real-life comparison with somebody that has your same job, asking for a new deal, which in turn could allow you to make some more money. Think about it from this standpoint. McCaffrey's been one of the best offensive players in the entire NFL, and he has no guaranteed money left. 
He has earned the right to get some more money and a raise. Back to that real life comparison. Imagine going into your workplace the last two years. You have changed the standard for the company. You have produced some unbelievable metrics to really drive the bottom line. You have the right to walk into your boss's office and say, I've had a profound impact on this company. Can I get a little bit of a raise? McCaffrey can do the same. So what do you think? Starting tomorrow, mandatory minicamp, Santa Clara, SAP Performance Center, will Ayuk or McCaffrey show up? S for show up, N for no show. Let me know down in the comments section. Father's Day is coming up in a couple of weekends, and if you want to get your dad something special to commemorate that day and to say thank you, Pops, for everything that you do, these 49ers dad shirts, they're on sale right now. Just $26. If you think your dad is the number one dad, get him a number one dad Niners shirt. He can proudly wear this to a game, out to the bar, mowing the lawn, hanging out with your mom. Chatsports.com slash 49 dad. I already have one being sent to my dad right now. Hop on board. Make your dad smile. Make him proud. He can also support the Niners in the process as well. Next up, a Fred Warner contract extension. Among all these players, he might deserve it the most because of the consistent production and availability and long-term value he's had with the Niners. His contract voids in 2027. That's why he might look for a new deal. And with an extension, San Francisco could save $11.42 million, $13.26 million, and $13.22 the next three years. Given his production, availability, him being a team captain, the best at his position, and the fact that you save a lot of money the next three years on a team that's becoming increasingly expensive and you're going to have to pay Brock Purdy if he performs in 2024 like he did in 2023, this feels like a no-brainer. Since coming into the league in 2018, third-round pick out of BYU, Fred Warner, all-pro Fred, has missed one game in six years. He's entering his age 28 season, and if there's a player, like I said, who's earned a new deal, it's Fred Warner. He epitomizes what the Niners are about. He's the face of the defense. You can make the argument, the best player on that defense. And without Fred Warner, this team is not the same. Everything that you want in a player, everything that you want in a leader, the ultimate team captain. Charvarius Mooney Ward is entering the final year of his deal. He has a 2024 cap hit of $18.4 million, a base salary of 13 and a half, and he's coming off a career year in which he was a second team all pro in 2023. The situation with Ward is very interesting in my opinion because the Niners have gotten a great bang for their buck in paying him 13 to $14 million per year because he's evolved into a number one corner. And some of the top tier corners around the NFL are making 18 to $20 million. So to have a number one corner who's been a lockdown guy, who's been ascending, who's coming off a year in which he was terrific, to pay him 13 14 million million, that really is a steal. And the Niners front office deserves credit for the foresight that they had because... He wasn't really projected to be this good when he left Kansas City for San Francisco. But this one's a bit risky because do you want to pay for past performance? If Ward has another good year, like he did last year, he might be too pricey. Simple as that. He led the NFL in passes defended last year, but he's going to be 30 years old. And sometimes when these corners are on the other side of 30, they don't perform like they used to when they were in their prime. But the opposite could be said for Diamador Lenore, because this is a player who's grown, he's developed under the Niners' watch, he's continued to get better, and he's still young. He's been a steal as a former fifth-round pick who can start on the outside, he can start on the inside. He's entering the final year of his rookie contract, and he has outplayed what the Niners have paid him which is why if you hit on some of those late rounders and they become starters, it's so beneficial for your football organization. D'Amador Lenore has been in the league for three years. He has given up three touchdowns in coverage in those three years. And what I like about him, 
the positional versatility. He could play inside, outside, the attitude, swagger, and dog mentality that he has. But speaking of that position, outside corners naturally make more money in free agency as compared to slot corners because playing on the outside, it's more difficult. You're going up against some of the preeminent wide receivers in the National Football League. So this year, where will Lenore play? Will he be on the outside or on the inside? When he hits free agency, how will teams view him? As a perimeter corner or a slot nickel corner? That's going to go a long way in determining how much money he could demand from the Niners, how much money he could demand from other teams. And if the Niners wanted to give him a contract extension, are they going to give him inside money or outside money? This has been a great homegrown story, and I think that Demo, a potential building block, if I had to pay one, between Lenore and Ward, I might go Lenore because he's the younger player. You've drafted him, and under your tutelage, he's become so special, he also might be cheaper. Aaron Banks, a very fascinating case study here, also entering the final year of his rookie deal, and he's also been a pretty good value play. He accounts for 1.28% of the Niners' 2024 salary cap. What's big for him going into the finale of his rookie contract ever since being a second round pick a few years ago, consistency. He's had stretches where he's played really, really well. And this is after not playing at all his rookie year, after being that second round pick out of Notre Dame. He's also had stretches where he's had some head scratching misses, some dull moments. When he's at his peak, he's a very good left guard who could cash in. When he's struggling, you wonder do we want to give him a lot of money to be an anchor along our offensive line, an offensive line that has a lot of question marks? Talano Hufanga coming off the torn ACL, another player who we want to talk about, first team all pro in 2022, his first and only season as a full-time starter. But coming off that injury in the final year of his contract, respectively, it's a huge risk to pay him right now. Moving forward, the price factor is going to factor in. His usage is going to factor in. Is he a scheme fit for what you want to do? Because he's not great against the pass. You use him a lot around the box against the run. He has a knack for making plays on the football. He's come through with a lot of forced fumbles and interceptions, but you kind of hide him within your coverage scheme a lot because he's not that traditional deep center field safety. And do you want to pay a player who's not that? And then lastly, Dre Greenlaw. He, too, due for a contract extension, a restructure here would save the Niners $4.7 million this year. An extension would save 5.6. He may have cashed in if he was able to stay on the field for this Niners defense in the Super Bowl against Kansas City. He was the X factor in Super Bowl 58. The Chiefs' offense was lost. Travis Kelsey had one catch in the first half. He was flying around making plays. Patrick Mahomes was mic'd up. He went to the sideline and said, we need to match their speed and physicality. A big part of that was Dre Greenlaw. He goes out, and then Oren Burks comes in to replace him, and the Chiefs targeted him nine times. He gave up nine catches. If Dre Greenlaw's on the field, Kelsey doesn't pop off. I don't know if the Chiefs' offense gets going like they did after recess. I think the Niners win that football game. But you just can't spend a lot of money on a player coming off an Achilles tear. Yes, with modern medicine and modern science and advancements as far as these surgical procedures go, when I was growing up, you didn't come back from a torn Achilles. And then five years ago, players were coming back in five years. Now they're coming back in nine months, or 12 months, excuse me. Uh, they used to, let me clarify that, used to not be able to come back from that injury. Then it used to take them, 12 to 16 months, right? Now players are coming back in nine months. But you could also be shot after a torn Achilles, especially with the player who uses his speed and physicality, who also has an injury history. So do you want to invest in a player coming off the severity of that? Or do you want to see how he comes back to see how he performs? I would probably go with the latter because that's the safer option, unfortunately, for Greenlaw. Not going to be able to cash in yet. So those are eight players right there who could land contract extensions for San Francisco. And as part of that, that's the money that the Niners could use. 
It is an option to roll that money over to next offseason. The Niners could do that. They had that option at their disposal. They could save that money to make a move at the trade deadline. They could wait. There's no rush to have to spend that money. All our options for the Niners. Wanted to outline it for the audience as always. Thank you so much for watching the show. Don't forget to subscribe. Mini camp preview coming up later today on the channel. And then we'll be live tomorrow here on the show. Thank you.